Sanjeev Jusuja for having invited me to speak on this subject. Uh, advancements in imaging uh, for diagnostic and uh, therapeutic purposes has definitely revolutionized the medicine, but at the expense of killing the art of clinical examination. Duplex ultrasound for pre-op uh, pre uh, assessment in every patient is not required. I'll talk about later. And in some of the reports I found that people have asked for venograms like uh, CT, um, uh, NGO, MR, carbon dioxide, uh, NGO, but I don't know where it is required. Uh, I'll talk to you later. What I feel is a good clinical examination can give you most of the information. And uh, Doppler ultrasound gives you the anatomy of the vessels, but not actual disp distensibility or elasticity. No doubt uh, you are doing a uh, augmentation test with either grip, uh, grip or with uh, BP cuff, but uh, uh, there are variations which we have seen on bench. Uh, I must tell you that uh, Dr. Rana, he is not here. He was the first nephrologist in the world who started vascular access. And uh, it is commendable. He had a lot of problems earlier, and this was 1981. We have been making these excesses for last almost 39 years. Then Dr. Bhalla came in 1987. And he learned the art, and I am very um, lucky to have been uh, trained by these two uh, giants. And uh, lead, uh, Dr. Sanjeev Jasuja, the organizer and brain behind Avatar, he has been with me, and uh, we were making a lot of excesses. And later, Dinesh joined us, and amongst four of us, we have an experience of about 15,000 AV shunt and fistulas. Uh, why a nephrologist should make a fistula? He's the end user. He knows what he uh, wants in the vascular access, and there is no dependence upon the surgeon. Because surgeon will do these excesses uh, at the fang end of the day, and whether they run, they don't run, it is not his uh, uh, problem. But in last 10 to 15 years, we have some dedicated and committed vascular surgeons who are working on uh, vascular access, but they are not available in every part of the country uh, like India. So what we want as nephrologists, a good length, straight, superficial, and matured cephalic uh, vein fistula with a long life. So pre uh, preservation of vein starts right from the day when you have examined the patient at whatever stage, stage three or stage four uh, CKD, he comes to you. And time of vascular access is uh, EGFR less than 30. And you select the site, site as uh, told to you by Dr. Jindal. And selection of vein, non-dominant, forearm, followed by uh, uh, right side, and followed by uh, brachial fistula. And this is a good matured fistula, which looks like, uh, and now selection of the veins, because I will come to the physical examination, a good clinical examination. This is a slide which shows that cephalic vein is all blocked, and we have ulnar vein. Um, ulnar vein is the one which is most of the time spared by the wrath of either a nurse or a doctor because that vein is usually not used for any drips or injections. So we should look for that before going to the brachial fistulas. Second is the examination of artery. We should palpate volume and uh, vessel wall thickness. And then there is, uh, as Dr. Jindal has mentioned about the LN test, we find it very good. You first compress both radial and ulnar artery, and you will see there will be bl blanching of the, the uh, hand. And then you release ulnar uh, vessel, and there will be uh, redness of the hand. 
and then again do the same way and lo you look for the radial artery and when you are having good circulation good redness that means ki this test is negative and that uh, artery is patent there is another modified ln test where you see the on pulse oximeter you see the wave pattern and when you block both the arteries there is a, a straight line when you uh, lift the ulnar um, uh, uh, you uh, lift the pressure on the ulnar artery you will find this wave pattern and same in the right uh, radial artery so this has been one of our uh, pioneering technique uh, which we had been doing, first creating an AV shunt and converting it to uh, AV fistula. Mm -hmm. Advantages of this uh, are that you are having immediate vascular access. There is good maturation of the vein as well as the artery and it is very easy to convert it to a, um, AV fistula. So we presented one of our work, 50 uh, patients, uh, with a basilic uh, vein uh, uh, AV shunt followed by a graft and uh, this works, works very well and you do it on the forearm and in, uh, when all these uh, veins are gone then you look over the basic, uh, brachial artery. This is our little experience which we presented uh, in uh, ASN Philadelphia in 2004 and uh, more than 4,000 cases, AV shunt, 40%, graft, 1%, and fistula, 59%. And uh, half-life of AV shunt was around 28 days with a range of uh, two days to uh, 200 days. And revision of shunt was required in just 11% of cases. Uh, around 50% of these patients had uh, diabetes and CVD also and uh, AK, AKI was present in almost 12 percent, acute on CKD 26 percent and rest had established CKD and uh, we converted around 400 fistulas, uh, shunts into fistulas. And this is again this slide was presented in morning and yesterday. This was a comparison between uh, uh, fistula made by a nephrologist, a radiocephalic, and made by a surgeon, a brachiocephalic, and the results were almost comparative. And in KDOGI guidelines also, <laughs> there is no recommendation that uh, uh, ultrasound is must. Both have got a physical examination and du duplex ultrasound, same grade B uh, uh, evidence. I feel that uh, pre-op uh, duplex ultrasound should be performed in ob obese patients where you cannot clearly uh, see the or feel the vessels, thrombophlebitis, any previous forearm surgery, and when you are suspecting a proximal stenosis like it was mentioned by Dr. Jindal. And I have uh, came across certain reports where uh, the success rates of 53% were uh, uh, this uh, Dr. Talwani and Miller. And uh, there are few reports where they, they have found that uh, routine uh, ultrasound mapping is not required and uh, there is not uh, much difference between these two. And this is a systemic review of uh, pre-op ultrasound. Uh, from Ireland by Wong, and uh, they could get only three randomized control trial till 2012, and they found that only in one study by Mandi uh, that there was some difference, 94% success rate uh, when there was ultrasound done as compared to 74%, but other two uh, randomized control trials did not show any difference. And uh, this is forest plot graph, which again shows that there was not much difference between the two. So what are the advantages of uh, duplex ultrasound? It g gives you clearly the diameter of artery as well as vein, to tells you about compressibility and it's adequate 
drainage into the deep venous system and also as mentioned by uh, Dr. Jindal that vein branching should be uh, seen and there is a major vein you have to tie that otherwise fistula will be there making a noise but flow will not be good. And again the arterial diameter more than 2 millimeter is good and it has been seen by studies from uh, uh, Melwith uh, that if diameter is less than 1.5 millimeter, the success rates are 50%, uh, flow is just 22 uh, centimeters per ml, and uh, if the diameter is more than two, there is definitely more than 50 centimeters of flow per minute. So success of a vascular access not only depends upon the uh, diameter of the vein or artery, it depends upon the technique. If you are taking deeper bites, you are definitely narrowing the uh, uh, lumen. And if you are not given a uh, proper uh, cut and uh, given the proper diameter of uh, anastomosis, you are going to have uh, under matured fistula if the cut is longer then you have steel as well as uh, aneurysm formation. Branchings I have already shown and you have to do superficialization of, of the vein to uh, prevent uh, pressure of the tissues or crossing vein or fibrotic bands uh, in front of the vein and uh, which can compress the vein. So li another limitation of uh, ultrasound is it doesn't tell you about elasticity or dispensability. And at times, when uh, the distal vein is blocked, the proximal vein, or we were seeing that fistula has blocked, and the proximal vein is not seen because there is no flow in that vein. While actually it is there, and this can be done by good clinical examination. Time is up, doctor, please. Yes. So conclude, a good clinical examination can give you most of the information. No doubt, duplex ultrasound is complementary to clinical examination, especially when uh, there is uh, thrombophilobitis, obese patients, and you are suspecting stenosis. And I think uh, it uh, nowadays, definitely, more technology and you depend upon that technology. But clinically, you can do in most of the times without an ultrasound. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Jindal, Dr. Thank Gupta. You.